Hello everybody and welcome to episode 58 of Anime on Draft. My name is Mark. I'm Rolando. And we are doing a video again since last week it didn't quite work out like we wanted it to. No. But it's but okay. Maybe this one will work <laughs> out or maybe it won't work out. Yeah, well hopefully it will. So uh, I guess it's a little bit of a treat we're doing trying to get some more video in for you guys. Uh, try to spice up the YouTube a little bit. And we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it's enjoyable. We'll get some more views on there. But of course, we're also uploading this to iTunes and SoundCloud still anyways. So so for everyone that's listening to this um, in their cars or on their phones, whatever, they're going to be like, yeah. I can't see what you guys are doing anyways. So Yeah, well, you can't see our beautiful faces and the, the weird gestures we make. But you can. Praise the sun. Praise the sun. <laughs> you can if you go to the YouTube. So um yeah we'll see hopefully this turns out well so uh we got a special episode of course um i wanted to choose a an ipa for this episode since we've been doing a lot of uh different kind of hazy ipas and i mean last week we had a double too i know it was a double right no it was, it was, it was a, we had a quad a quad with quad last week we added a stout. and stout so um i wanted to get something american ipa in here yeah so um, we're the ipa podcast because most of our beers are ipas yeah, that's just how it works. Anime on IPA. <laughs> IPA is on draft yeah. with anime. And it pays yeah. on yeah. India Pale Anime. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> anyways, so let's get into this. Uh, what I chose for this week was uh, apparently you pronounce this uh, Brewery West. Mm. Um, it's, I guess, Dutch. It's uh, spelled B R O U W E R I J J J G J. Brewery. Brewery. It was brewery. Um, brewery rest they're out of San Pedro in LA. I guess technically. Holy shit, 6.8%. Yeah, so this is 6.8. So we're going to be hanging out here for a while. Yeah, so it's going to be good. <laughs> um, and uh, I had actually seen this uh, at the liquor store that I go to uh, a couple weeks ago, and I wanted to get some of like one of their beers. Cause they have a lot of really cool art, but what's interesting is that they're just stickers though. Oh yeah. So Probably. yeah. So they're yeah. not like full, like covered cans. They're just stickers on there, but they got really cool art. Like, apparently this one's by design is by Van varnish. So yeah, it's it smells, interesting. It smells good though. It smells good. Definitely pour it out. out. Yeah. Oh, I definitely spilled a little bit. My bad. You have to Zamboni that. Oh, shit. Oh, well, mine went super, super heady. You got to learn the art of the poor. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good, man. It look, it, honestly, it looks a little cloudy. Look at that. That's a beautiful looking beer right yeah, there. Yeah, it's a nice, nice solid uh, layer ahead right there. It's... Just uh, it is very I don't know it's weird it looks like a hazy IPA it does doesn't it? because it's so dark yeah it, it, it looks like there's a little bit of sentiment in there too yeah but I mean it smells delicious like it's very citrusy yeah floral yeah it's got a very nice strong smell to it um it doesn't smell too hoppy though to be to be quite honest it's got a nice balance so this was actually brewed with, um, where did it say? Mecca grade barley, raw wheat, raw oats, and Centennial. Uh, Simcoe and Citra hops. So the Citra hops is like one that's like really well known out here in LA, like uh, the West Coast, I think. Okay. That's what a lot of like, I think their IPAs out here are being brewed with. So like a lot of West Coast IPAs use that. Yeah. In, okay. Mm -hmm. So let's take a first try it. That it's a little seems, sweet. Yeah, yeah. That right. seems more like a hazy than it. Yeah. Than a regular IPA. Interesting. So this is an American IPA, but yeah, it seems a little more like on that hazy side. <laughs> well, so I I shared a link on Twitter. Um, yeah. From that uh, magazine article, or I guess it was like an internet magazine article, and they right. reviewed like three hundred. IPAs yeah but like they've also been taught they have another article if you uh if you 
check that website. Um, I think it's like Paste or something. I think it was Paste. Paste magazine. Yeah. Um, you can throw that in there if we if it's wrong. Um, but yeah, we'll, <laughs> we can put the link on there. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, they they have another article where they talk about like the state of IPAs. Oh, cool! I didn't see that. On and it, kind of where it's going, and it's basically be, they're becoming hate the IPAs are becoming hazy, American IPAs. So. Interesting. I mean, it's it is becoming increasingly popular, and I did like read that on the article. They kind of touched upon it and saying that like they had to include a lot of like new categories because of like how popular the hazy IPA is. Yeah, and so they're just getting so many more of these well, um, submissions for hazy IPAs. The bulk of the IPAs in that top IPAs like blind test list. There are a lot of. They were a lot of hazy IPAs. Yeah, that New England style. So and like they didn't have a lot of the classics that normally you would normally find on the list like um like the original ipas from like stone mm-hmm, mm-hmm. ballast point they had a couple of like sierra nevada uh special specialties from each of the like yeah you know those big breweries so it would be interesting to see like an overall list including including like the originals because but then again you might come into this conversation of has ipa have ipas changed changed yeah like are they like is it like a whole different category now that's true i mean it's a good point like there's there's like so many ipas and that have come out that of course i guess it's going to change i mean and still you're going to get like your really like hoppy hoppy ones like mm-hmm. you know that stone is pretty much famous for but i think that a lot of the um craft beer scene is moving more towards that hazy because it seems like it's it's easier to reach like a wider audience yeah. because it's like it's got a good balance of flavor you know you get that kind of sweet citrusy with that hoppy side like that nice hop finish but i mean a lot of like you know yeah regular beer drink like you know heavy beer drinkers are not heavy but like you know like like uh, ca- occasional casual yeah, yeah. W- will like that kind of you know hoppy flavor from an ipa yeah so because like i i personally like really hoppy hoppy beers like the the Pliny. oh yeah and uh it's weird because i really like hazy ipas yeah it so is weird, huh? it's weird to think that like normally i would think of an ipa as that hop punch but hazy ipas are more like there's hops in there mm-hmm. but it's a lot more of a refreshing taste right right yeah and i think I, I'm the same way too. Like I really like those really hop forward beers. The uh, I recently had the that Alpine, the Hoppy Birthday, and that was like really heavy on the hops, but it was a good balance of flavor. Still, like it didn't seem like it. You were just you know drinking straight like hops, and it was like super bitter. It still had like a good finish to it. So like even this beer, like yeah. you drink it and it's got this sweet citrusy kind of flavor, but it the finish is kind of hoppy so yeah. it's not it's not like i'm drinking a like a shock top with orange or you know <laughs> something you know right, like right. Uh, just like a belgian wheat ale with orange like this is like a different flavor profile you i guess you could say than yeah. like honestly most categories of beers out there yeah yeah i agree all right, well, that was a good uh, discussion about IPAs. You wanna you wanna move into rating or like what do you what do you think about this? Okay, yeah, um, I like the color. It reminds me of a of a wheat ale. Yeah, and the head dissipated as you can tell as we were talking, mm-hmm. but there's still like a nice solid layer there. It's very like citrus forward, and then the aftertaste is like a nice little hop finish and then it's kind of got like a weird not weird but like it's got a nice um blend of flavors it's like kind of tropical yeah kind of like you're drinking a juice kind of a little thick like a juice thick t-h-i-c-c t-h-i-c-c thick nice um (laughs) but honestly it's a nice combination like you know, back to what we were saying, like how IPAs have kind of changed. Yeah. So, you know, there's like the um, shift towards adding these tropical fruits to IPAs. 
like Drew's mentioned it a lot before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, this is probably kind of like the natural evolution of that. Yeah. Just. It's a good point. Hazy ish. Yeah. It's like, you're like infringing on that, like yeah. New England hazy style, but you're still keeping up with like the, the heart of like an American style IPA that's like got like a nice finish of hops to it. Especially like you said, like right at the beginning, you get that hoppy, hoppy t like taste. Honestly, like maybe hazy is the new American IPA. Maybe. Yeah. It's changing from the Indian pale ale to yeah. the American. From, from the typical San Diego IPA, <laughs> which is kick your ass, yeah. hop. Yeah, just hops. straight punch in the face with hops. To the uh, New England style where they're like, it's chill. It's chill a bit, San Diego. Right, right. Nice. All right. So rating ratings wise. Um, I like it. Yeah. I think it's really good. Um, I'm surprised this is 6.8% because it's honestly tastes like juice. Yeah. So just for the fact that it's so drinkable <laughs> and it's strong, like yeah. you don't want to session this cause you'll get fucked up. Yeah, seriously. But I mean it's like this is this is a good like I'm taking this to the golf course next. Nice. We're bringing the you're going to play golf for the first <laughs> time and we're going to take these on the golf course nice. and these will get you going just one can of these. Nice. So I'll give it a four and a half. Four and a half. Yeah. Right on. So I think that's a good rating. I was thinking four point five as when you were talking. I was like, yeah, this is a good four point five, four and a half. Maybe I would give it a, I would probably give it a four, seven, five if it wasn't so expensive. It How was kind of pricey. It? it was uh, $18 for a four pack. Oh Jesus. I yeah. ate nine bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean like it's a, it's a good beer though. Like I, I enjoy it a lot. I, I think, and not to say that the price is not going to down at all, but um, I think like we said, it's kind of infringing upon that like hazy IPA style that I wasn't expecting. Yeah, I, I did like because you said you wanted a, yeah. a non hazy IPA. Yeah, I was expecting like, you know, something a little more like hoppy. I was um, expecting an absolutely clear. Yeah. Very carbonated look, but yeah. it looks like a hazy IPA. Well, I don't know. Maybe we got to surprise another one, but <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's still very enjoyable. I, I think it's a I think it's a good beer. I, I would I would definitely get this one again. It's a shame that Alec hasn't been here this whole time that we've been having these yeah. hazy IPAs. I don't mean, I don't know what the uh, availability of some of these are like out there in, in, in Texas. Texas? Yeah. Well, if you guys just figured out, yeah. Alec is in Texas. Yeah. So, I mean, he's in Texas and we're in Southern California. And, and I feel like so SoCal is becoming like this mecca for craft beer kind of a thing. Yeah. Well, as well as like a lot of other places, you know, out east. Yeah. But like... Southern California is kind of like this brewery stronghold. Yeah. I where mean, you can go like to the liquor store. Any, honestly, any beer at a liquor store. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be I, expensive. You know, I, I found another six pack of the, uh, the, the KBS oh, really? <laughs> at that liquor store. Was it $2? No, it was hiding actually in the, in like on the side of, uh, one of the, um, the coolers. Like it was, you could tell that it was like pushed off to the side and like in the corner. Someone was saving it. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it was definitely not two dollars though. Yeah, okay. I didn't see the price. Um, well, we'll have to try that Canadian bacon. Oh, the, Can the Canadian breakfast stout. Breakfast. Yeah, we got Canadian try bacon stout. That sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, this is the uh, brewery. Brewery West. West Picnic Lightning. Definitely go try this one. They got a lot of other, a lot of, a lot of other um, IPA styles out, out that are available too. So. And they're a Dutch brewery. I think it's a Dutch brewery, but they're in San Pedro. So I think their main one is like, you know, in, in Europe. Okay. Oh. It's an import. Yeah. An imported American pale ale. That has like based himself. And by American, they just meant New England. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, so that was good. Um, now we would go into our happy hour, but we wanted to hold off on the uh, Steins Gate for this week since Drew isn't here. Um, we've had a few episodes to, to kind of catch up on. Uh, I know we, we went over some of it last week, but we'll have to hold off for this week. 
um, there was a, kind of a lot of development that happened. And I think giving another week will, will be good because we'll kind of see like, you know, where, yeah. where it peaks, where it peaks. And then hopefully we'll get some sort of re- resolution. Well, you're not going to be here next week. I won't be here next week, but I'll still watch it. But <laughs> Drew, Drew will probably be here. Yeah. Or if Drew's not here, maybe Alec will be here. Maybe. And then it won't be video unless he decides to use his webcam. You guys can do that. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, so we'll get into some of the premieres that we watched. Um, we went over Hanabato last week. Yeah. So you want to get into that one? All right. Uh, episode two and three came out. Yes. And we watched two and two three. And three. So yes. um, we went over like initial thoughts, right? With with Hanabato. We talked about like the animation yeah. being cool and yeah. all of that. Yeah. And I think they, I, I'm really glad that it's still keeping up with like how well it's being shot and like, you know, like the uh, intricacy in some of the artwork that is, that that's there. Like all of the shuttlecocks are like really well drawn, even when they're like yeah. flying, like the animation is awesome. And also like the fraying of the feathers. Yeah. That's so cool. So it's like, normally you would have an anime like this and it's just generic shit. Even if there's like that's CG, cool. calm yourself. <laughs> um, if, if there's CG, you'll have this kind of same shuttlecock, normally that's just there and in this it's like they do use like cg to an extent but there's different fraying on the feathers and like you can tell it's been used yeah and their shoes are like super well drawn yeah like like you get all of like the kind of dirt on them yeah when they're like haven't moved around it's it's there have been spots where the animation is a bit like you know, you can tell the budget was a little bit lower for those spots, but like for all of the sports shonen scenes, <laughs> shonen, like those action scenes are like, really well drawn. Really, yeah, it's it's so cool. Like, even like the the muscles when they're you know like reaching back to go up for a smash, like, yeah, you can tell that like they're actually showing like muscle lines as opposed to yeah. just you know just having an arm like and you it's know, swing down. Always that typical like freeze frame like slow mo like the, the, shot yeah like we can you really feel the impact yeah of you know what they're what they're doing like what they're performing like you really get a sense for like the motion yeah exactly i and think it's cool i think it's really well really really well done so um we're gonna keep watching this one so i'm gonna two, watch this yeah definitely. this is like probably my top series this season so yeah far. yeah so episode two and three um let's get into some of like the plot uh, episode two was about getting, I forget her name, Ayana, Ayana ha- Hanasaki. Yeah. Hanasaki's trying to get her back into the club and like stay in the club. Um, and then episode three is more about, you know, just solidifying, yeah, her. solidifying like the fact that she wants to be there and kind of the reason why she wants to continue doing badminton or why she quit. And then, oh no, no. Episode two was why Aragaki why she was in the slump. Yes. And then three was why Hanasaki was in the slump, essentially. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so like we're kind of getting into like motivational like sides of it. And I think that's I think it's kind of a good pace, actually, because otherwise we kind of already know where it's going in a sense. But we also, you know, like this is going to kind of go in the way of like very typical sports anime. Where like you're just getting set up with you know tough opponent after tough opponent, and then there comes like psychological issues where they may like you know break apart, and you know people from their past may surface up and kind of question you know their motivations again. But I think this is kind of going at a good pace where like you're trying to like really learn more about the characters, so you actually see some character development yeah. along with like really good you know sports action. So you say typical. Yeah. <laughs> and right. I'm going to compare this anime to another anime that is sort of <laughs> similar in plot, which is Saki, the magical Mahjong anime. And they've got pretty similar setup, which is in this anime, Hanebado, you've got Hanesaki like 
doesn't want anything to do with badminton. Like she's kind of sworn it off and she's getting dragged into this club and like being like, hey, we want to go to nationals, like all this stuff. (laughs) <laughs> the inner high tournament. Right. Um, like, but she's got an issue with her mother and all of this stuff and like being abandoned or like that kind of deal. Like we're like, we're kind of now seeing the mother as like this kind of antagonist type deal where like, it's this psychological trauma that she has. Yeah. Very your lion April type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's funny. Cause like, I actually thought about like watching this and it was like, they actually treated her trauma better yeah. than your lion april did with um what's his name um our our uh, i was gonna say I, I don't remember his name i, I almost said araragi but that's, uh, that's definitely said Aragato, but, that's but, not but, it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to continue like there's like that similarity where like in saki she's like not interested in playing mahjong because like it was like a family issue with her sister moving to Tokyo. And then now the goal is to like, you know, find her, meet her at the inner high tournament. Arima. Arima. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> this, you can tell it's going to be like her trying to connect with her mother, Saki connect with her sister, Hanibato connect with her mother. Mm-hmm. They're Saki, um, her sister this is the best, high school player in the nation Hanibato her mother is the best mother's yeah badminton player in the nation <laughs> there's like so many similarities you've got her Yuri love interest has big boobs just like in Saki <laughs> Yuri love interest big boobs you've got the kind of wait that was also in Saki too yeah oh my god uh like I haven't it, seen it by the way so I haven't seen it but I mean, I don't you should watch Saki. I don't if know. If you like, like this, planned, then planned you should it. watch Saki. If you if you follow Saki, um, then you know you've probably seen these similarities. So I like Saki. I yeah. like that yeah. show and the manga. And I'm gonna keep watching this. Cool. I also like racket sports. Right, right. right. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it it helps that. This is another racket sport anime. Cool. Like now that there's no baby steps to fucking, <laughs> you have to read the manga. Right, the right. Manga is good, but like seeing the actual. That's the thing about that's the thing about stuff. sports anime is like I uh, I mean I watch Haikyuu with my brother, and like I didn't really have any like interest to watch it until he like sat me down and was like let's just watch like a few episodes. We watched two episodes and I was like hooked immediately. I was like, this is that's, awesome. That's it's, how sports anime it's gets so you, hype. Yeah. And like, I've seen like baby steps too. And I was like, this is cool. Like, you know, it's a pretty cool series. And then, but yeah, like, you know, season, season, like series like this is just, it's so much more like, it's so, um, like pleasing to watch it rather than to like read it like in a manga, because in a manga, you're more just, so just getting like plot, like you can get yeah. some like really good, um, frames, but yeah. Uh, but it's like only so seeing much. everything. Yeah, like like so every much. match in Baby Steps, like you you see what's going on, and it's like because obviously you can tell like they're adapted from manga because like even Baby Steps, um, I'm sure Haikyuu. I haven't seen Haikyuu, but like yeah. Saki, this like there's a lot of stuff. Like when we get into the matches, I'm sure we'll get into their heads. Yeah, and like there's a lot of like internal monologue talking, but yeah, like it's talking about the strategy because it's like we see our Ar- Aragaki is like talking about like I need to do this, he's gonna do this, I need to do this. So there's like a lot of that internal like introspection. Yeah, and that's like the big thing about like being able to show like the, I guess the depth in the manga mm-hmm. is like it's just dialogue because it's just a bunch of cells that have like the action going on right Whereas like this it's animated and then so you get the in-between shots like the flowing the motion and that's what kind of takes it the step yeah above that's true and it's interesting because like i, I was gonna say like you only get so much time during like a, an anime to like include some of that like text yeah but they they do a good job to like kind of freeze things and like slow things down yeah. so you're not like falling behind and like and you still get that kind of like uh, progression in like their thoughts too. Um, and I think I think the show does a pretty good job of that as well. Yeah. Not to mention again. 
<laughs> again with the we'll just, camera. We'll just let that one go. We'll let that one go for now. But yeah. um, again, with the Saki kind of parallels, it, yeah. like I kind of see this going in the way of, so in Saki, we start to see Saki's older sister as having not being this this super antagonist type character but like she actually does care for her sister unlike what we've seen i have a feeling like there's going to be something because like we see like the match where um what is it kauruko yeah cheats Kauruko. by getting getting her getting, sick, getting her sick <laughs> and going like hey, i beat you on equal terms yeah and so like maybe it's going to be this thing where like it's this mis- misunderstanding where the mother is like i just realized i'd been pushing you so hard and like i saw you like you played through the match and even though you were sick like your health is more important that or it'll be like oh you 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 gave an excuse for being sick for for losing and like yeah. you're not accepting the fact that you were defeated like because of this like regardless regardless yeah and so like it'll be like one of those two things yeah that's true I'm like, I'm kind of hoping that it's like you get somewhat of like a redeem, like redemption for the mother. Cause it's like, you, you wouldn't think that she's just a, like, it's a, still bad that she abandoned her child her. Right, right. for a couple years and went to go teach this other prodigy. Whereas her daughter was supposed to be Which, that. We'll see. Prodigy, blonde prodigy, blonde prodigy and Saki. <laughs> that goes to the high school that this older sister is doting. Are you, are you saying this is? I'm Saki? saying this is Saki magical badminton. badminton. Magical badminton. <laughs> Saki the badminton anime. Oh, dude. Yeah, maybe we'll see the magical powers come out. Yeah, we'll see it once they start getting into matches. Yeah, and like they're facing opponents who have like superpowers and or then like special moves. You'll know it's you'll know it's it's like Saki when. Hanasaki and Aragaki just start going like, I want to go to nationals with you. <laughs> I, We're going to go. We're going to find your mother. I oh. would save that until like episode like eight, yeah. maybe eight. when they're like, you know, solidified as a good team. If you told me that maybe, maybe or sooner, if you told me that this manga was on hiatus, <laughs> then, <That's> Saki, right? <laughs> then, then it would be the same. You're like, oh yeah, we'll get a next chapter in two months. Yeah, in like maybe like a year. Yeah. Well, I mean, unless you're a fan of Berserk, then that's that's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> or if or if you're a fan of the Full Metal Panic anime. Oh god. And just like Ooh, knowing that, that the story finished like way way long ago, and how it, many how many years was it? It was like eight years or something. It was a long time. <laughs> and it's not done. And it's not done because. Nice. Invisible victory uh, ended. I believe around it's on break really? and something. They haven't finished the story. God, they got through maybe two novels. There's I, I so believe. many stories like yeah. that. Same thing with like Hunter X Hunter. The manga is still going, but the author just takes like a year break and then yeah. does come out with like five chapters and then we'll go on hiatus again. But yeah. at least it's not going hiatus hiatus. every episode like Saki. Oh, so, or I mean every, every chapter, I mean, <laughs> Like there's a reason why in between in between the original anime and the official second season, not the spin-off in between, mm-hmm. there was like four years, five, four or five years in between. It's because of the fucking manga, just like there were so many hiatuses. It just wouldn't keep going. Oh, that yeah. sucks. Now I believe they've got the author on a tight leash because he's <laughs> been forced to release a chapter every month. Nice. And you know, uh, you know what happened? Um the author of My Hero Academia, I think that's who it was, didn't know that he was supposed to have a chapter out last week. So that's why it was on break. <laughs> he said he got his schedule mixed up. <laughs> he's like, I'm so sorry. I just, he's like, I thought it, I thought it was on break, but I wasn't. So uh, I didn't have a chapter. <laughs> I feel bad for these, yeah. for these manga authors because they're just getting, they're just on such a tight schedule. It's crazy. And they always like just push it to the deadlines yeah yeah and i feel bad for the editors too because they're probably all everyone's stressed it's very stressful creative stuff is very stressful yeah but it's like very rewarding but it's also very stressful yeah yeah moving on i guess from the anime 
uh, manga comparisons as well, like especially with taking breaks. But we have another new series that is also a manga, started as a manga, How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. <clears throat> that was episode one and two that we you saw. Yeah, yeah, that we saw. So, um, you said you've read the manga though, right? I've read up to definitely. They're gonna cover what I've read up to in in here. Um, and more just from looking at the opening, but, um, maybe I'll read, read it and catch up. Yeah. I don't think I read much of it. I mean, I know I I probably read the first like five chapters, but I just, I don't know. I stopped because I, I think I've read like half of what's out, which is like 30 some, maybe like 30 ish chapters. Yeah. So like read like maybe like 17 chapters. Okay. So it's like the first main arc ish yeah that'll probably get covered to like maybe episode <coughs> six or seven mm-hmm. i'm gonna guess maybe maybe earlier if they if it's this rushed pace that yeah, kind of feels like it's going on yeah it seems like it's going pretty quick but i mean there's really not like a whole lot that happens plot wise besides like the introduction of characters in the beginning and like the establishment of like that he's super op <laughs> like yeah diablo just is so strong that People don't realize that this like new demon lord is basically a god compared to them yeah. because he is of a completely higher level. He uses magic that they don't use because they don't train yeah. and they can't because they're afraid of dying. And like he just does it with no problem. It makes sense, though, because they're afraid of dying is that they don't go out and level. Yeah, right. It's like, why would you continually put yourself out there to essentially die get hurt like you know possibly die like every day it's like it makes sense for a game right but so you can go out and respawn yeah you maybe you get killed by some slimes and then you respawn respawn, yeah (laughs) so i mean it makes sense why like they're under leveled in in the world sure and so i just think the whole premise is kind of like a parody ish on the this. isekai yeah yeah but at the same time it's also just another it's very cl- cliche i guess yeah because the main character is super op yeah and he now has to save the world type of thing and like or he has to save somebody in this yeah. case two girls it's it's pretty funny yeah like the from what i've read of the manga it's been funny but also like a lot of the actual action Mm-hmm. is interesting at least it was interesting to read um so i felt like in episode two the whole thing with the uh whatchamacallit the the, the elves yeah, and yeah. that fight in the forest that felt a bit lackluster yeah compared I, to the manga yeah i definitely read that in the manga and i thought and it was I a little bit it, was a little, it seemed cooler in the manga yeah <laughs> But I mean, it just seems a little rushed. Yeah. And like, I, I mean, I, I kind of had a feeling that it would come to this because this seems like a very fan service yeah. anime to begin with. So like you, so if you've read that much, like, you know, like that scene oh, at yeah. the end of episode two yeah, is like super, in the, in, like, it's basically super just empty hentai, like <laughs> in, in the manga. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I wonder how this is going to happen. Censoring. Yeah. Censored. It, just completely dark. Just... <laughs> censored <laughs> so it's it's definitely kind of interesting the way they're approaching all the etchy stuff yeah in the series i i also think that the character designs don't look as nice as the as yeah the manga yeah i agree i mean this is kind of not a good representation point in it's, case yeah but i feel like the act like if you watch the ending i think that's what the like you can get an idea of what the actual character designs are, but that's also very like lewd. So <laughs> the ending, yeah, the ending, it, it was, yeah, until they're in like wedding dress. I don't, uh, EDs, man, I don't, yeah, I don't get it. it literally, just take a creative design and just go go balls to the walls with whatever they want. Endings are just music videos. Yeah, openings are just like kind of teasers, I guess. Te- yeah, teaser music videos. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, keep watching it. Maybe just I'll probably f- keep watching this just right. because I've been reading it. And okay. 
I think I will. Maybe I'll get a few more episodes. If I get tired of it, I'll drop it like, kind of like I did the manga. But we'll see. Like that was a whole reason to why I dropped the manga was because it was becoming an anime so I could watch it instead. But I don't know. We'll see. And this is kind of an iffy one for, for me. Definitely. All right. Moving on. Yeah. What do we got next? Uh, Haru kind of receive another sports anime. So this is about beach volleyball. Um, did we go over this last week? We did not. We did not. So this is, I think, going to be very enjoyable. Maybe a little bit more lighthearted than um, Hanabato. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I think it's got, I think it's got a really great character design. Um, they're funny. They're enjoyable to watch. This the, one's got more Yuri. It's got a lot more Yuri. It's definitely a little more on the etchy side than Hanabato. But it's. <laughs> kind of funnier <laughs> it's, it's it's a little more lighthearted. so yeah. if you get like stressed out with sports anime and like you want to like you know take a step back and if you just want to look at boobs and butts then yeah on the beach yeah exactly yeah. this is definitely the one this is this is the show for you <laughs> this is the show that um if we went to the crunchyroll premiere at anime expo for like the yeah stuff yeah this is the one where the guy will yell at g yeah when they're talking about, they literally just butt. zoomed in on her butt, like for a few minutes on the episode. It's it kind of funny. A few minutes. It was like half the episode was her <laughs> butt, and they kept being, zooming in. On it, like, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they like zoomed in on it, like really closely. I was like, okay. And they right. kept talking about her butt too. They're like, yeah. you have a very adorable butt. <laughs> yeah, she's like, it's sexy. I don't know. He's <laughs> like, all right. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a very lighthearted, fun fun uh, series. I'll keep watching it. I think it's yeah. I think it's interesting. Um, we mentioned you mentioned the the character designs are similar to another show. I don't know if you remember the name. Yeah, of it. I I was like the eyes look very like just the way the eyes were are drawn, like looks very like distinct. Mm-hmm. So I asked you what like the studio was, and you looked it up, and I was like I don't recognize the studio, the but C2C, you mentioned. I think you mentioned that like some of the shows I was like oh they did Shumatsu or like I guess you could say it like the abbreviation for like the light novels is I think it's like Shuka Shuka where mm-hmm. it's like um the anime that aired last year yeah. that was about these like fairy girls that fight these demon beings that were created by mankind type deal but like the way the eyes were drawn hmm. was like very similar interesting i don't think i watched it or nor heard of it but it apparently i mean i enjoyed it but i guess yeah. it didn't follow the light novels as well uh-huh. so i bought the light novels while we were in japan oh nice can't read it nice maybe one day maybe one day it's a motivation <laughs> there you read go. these six light novels that that's that's excellent just, practice like, can't, can't read these kanji so. yeah i was gonna say yes excellent practice until you come to kanji and you're yeah. like damn it i need to and look this like, up how do i look this I up i can't read that <laughs> so they're just sitting on the bookshelf nice maybe one day maybe like i said yeah uh, i like the character design though i i, I like the eyes like i think they kind of they're like very like sparkly yeah, yeah. So. Kind of like a real glistening eye. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it fits in with like the whole kind of Okinawa beach theme of the show. So I, I think it's cool. I think it I think it's got like a lot of character to, to the show. Although they are in Okinawa and oh, then right. the pair of the high school champions They're from are from Kyoto. Kyoto, yeah. Neither of the two characters from Okinawa speak with like an Okinawan accent interesting and then the kyoto well like one of the kyoto girls doesn't speak with a kansai accent so it's just interesting because like most anime that like they talk about like these characters are from this region yeah yeah they tend to overemphasize like the accents Mm -hmm. and then you know poke fun at it but this one is just like it's just about the story it's not apparent at all yeah which they're just like speaking tokyo most of the like studios, I'm assuming. Are in Tokyo, I mean, so. I'm I'm just assuming it's like a stylistic <laughs> choice where That's they true. don't want it to be about like noticing like this is persons from this region. That's true. That That's a good of, point. Hmm. And I mean, I guess technically everyone speaks regular Tokyo Japanese in the majority of um or can. So. Right. That's true. I guess it's a good point. I don't know. Uh, that's interesting. That's that's something that I don't normally pick up on. Because, like you said, it's it's either like 
overly expressed or yeah. it's just like not apparent at all. It is like they usually like poke fun at it. Like, hey, yeah. you speak with yeah. this accent. Like, what do you speak funny? Type yeah. Of thing? Yeah. That's interesting. It's not nice, but. It's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this one definitely I'm gonna keep watching for sure Uh, it's very lighthearted. so yeah yeah I'm gonna keep watching this cool All right. so moving on um, this is our last premiere that we watched Asobi Asobase and this is one that I don't even think we brought up when we talked about premieres but this one's fucking hilarious it's so funny it totally caught me off guard I didn't know what to expect when I read it like I read the premise And it was just like, this girl is trying to teach somebody else English and uh, she joins this club, but something happens, like something ensues and like they try to like find their way around it. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. (laughs) Um, It, so funny thing about this anime. Yeah. It's kind of got a similar ish, like. The way the style is a little similar to Nichi Joe. Have you? Yeah, that's exactly what I yeah. was thinking. Yep. And so, like, it's like the overly, like, <laughs> just exaggerated expressions. Yeah. And, like, it's just over the top stuff. Yeah, you get these, like, really quick cuts to, like, the punchline type of thing or, yeah. or just, like, a visual gag. And I, like, it was funny because I was watching this expecting nothing. I was just, I'm, like, giggling. Yep like for like a bunch of stuff and like even stuff that was like super like I knew what was going to happen. Yeah. Like later when Olivia, the blonde girl, like like they see water coming out of like the classroom and the teacher (laughs) walks by is like, Hey girls, what's going on in there? Like I'm going to open the door. They're like, they just panic. And then I'm just like, they're going to fucking say that she, that Olivia like pissed her pants or something and then they do it and it's still fucking hilarious it's just because like of the way it plays out it's like this running joke of just like the teacher doesn't believe them and then he goes down and it's just like you just know like you're hoping that you don't know what's gonna happen but you know yeah. what he's gonna do and as he just goes he just down touches it licks the fucking water <laughs> it's like he's like oh are you sure this is pee it's clear it, it tastes like water and it's just like no i didn't <laughs> want did that, no, that? <laughs> that's so bad and it's um, like they notice they realize it too it's like it's just so funny like their reactions so definitely i have to say i'm so glad that like yeah. i stumbled upon this and you know you yeah. watched it too we'll have to get everybody else to watch yeah. this it's, but the whole thing with like Olivia actually just being born and raised in Japan. (laughs) So she speaks fluent Japanese and sucks at English, (laughs) but she keeps trying to play like she's the American, like she's American, like an American exchange student. (laughs) The teacher pulls her aside. is like, why are you speaking this way? (laughs) He's like, you scored a 90% on Japanese on the entrance exam and less than 20% in English. He's like, why are you? Can you, you doing please that? just speak normally? She's like, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then when she like slips and speaks essentially like a native, they're like, wow, her oh, Japanese sh- is getting really she's good. She's progressing so fast. <laughs> she's like, shit. <laughs> I have to slow down. <laughs> I have to make it seem like I'm, I'm getting better slower. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny. I, I, I'm looking forward to this one, man. I, like I said, this is definitely caught me by surprise. Yeah. It's funny. Um, I like how the one girl just like cheats at thumb war. Yeah, she's, she's just, just cheating. She's just like slow mo, like brings her finger around. She's counting so slowly. One, two. It's probably all that year, those years of just losing to her older sister. Yeah, she's like just, really like, good at games. Back on. Yep. on everyone else yep. it's like i feel bad for olivia but olivia is also just like lying to everyone so, so funny that she kind of deserves it that frame where she said man this kid's a whack and it just had me <laughs> dying so much i just couldn't i had to pause the video i was i just couldn't stop laughing <laughs> this this one's funny yeah i i enjoy this one i'm glad there's another like really funny series after hinamatsuri oh yeah like i think that like it, it completes like this season it, it kind of when you have such a funny funny series show, yeah, yeah. So, oh man I, i'm looking forward to this one a lot Same. i hope it continues to be funny yeah 
Yeah. If it, if it if it ends up being as good as Nichijo, then it's a success. Definitely. Yeah. And it seems like they're they're they got a good formula, and I hope it doesn't get old. But it yeah. seems like they're they'll do pretty well. Yeah. Um, I think there's another comedy that adds out, and I, I think maybe you should check it out. It's kind of it's it's funny. It's called Chio's School Road, and it's just like this girl who's going to school every day, but um, she's like this socially awkward gamer, like hardcore gamer, mm, okay, okay. and um, this popular gore, popular girl, the popular, popular gore, gore. <laughs> the, yeah, the other girls. Oh shit! This turned <laughs> for the worst real quick. It's, it's not King's Game. Um, the popular girl like approaches her and she just like doesn't know how to react. So she just like goes through all these scenarios on like how to respond to this girl who's approaching her. And like, she's like, is she, maybe she's talking about somebody who's behind me or maybe she's waving to me, but she's confusing me for somebody else. She's like, how do I get out of this? And then she's like, I know what to do. So she just dives into a dumpster. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> why is that your option to get out of a socially awkward situation? It's so weird. It, yeah, it's, it's a pretty, it's a funny show. Is it, is it a full 23 minute episode? Yeah, it's a full 23. Okay. It's, but it's like broken down and there's like four different like segments in each okay, episode. So it's probably like a, from adapted from like a four coma yep, manga. Exactly. Yeah, I think so. so. Um, I think you should watch it. Uh, that's another one that's going to be kind of lighthearted. I'll probably watch it if I have time type of thing. Yeah. And just get a few laughs out of it. And then we've still got a few premieres that we have yet to either see or talk about. Yes, exactly. Like the, uh, so in the hot spring one. Yuna in the, the haunted hot, hot, spring. hot spring. Yeah. You know, Drew really wants to see that, so we'll wait for that. Yeah, and I think that's a good idea. That one where the, the dude goes to the island island so i watched the first episode i don't know there's another one where their dude goes to island are you serious college oh uh grand blue grand blue yeah so there's uh, two island three island anime three island because anime. there's also uh oh there's also hard <laughs> where they go to okinawa but uh there's three island anime that's true it's a good point um yeah i don't know if i'll keep watching island I don't, it didn't seem like it was something that was I don't know. I'm not sure about it. Well, I'll, I'll I'll look at these premieres and see which ones. Yeah, maybe watch the first episode and then take your own uh, kind of stance on it. But we'll see. Um, Yuna at the haunted Yuna in the haunted hot springs. I think we'll we'll probably cover that. It seems like it'll be kind of funny, enjoyable at least. Yeah, maybe funny. It's, uh, what kind of show is it? It's so it's about this um, this kid who is kind of like this exorcist in training. Um, he didn't finish his training, so he only knows like limited and he can only punch ghosts and spirits. And that's how he exercises them. But he comes and moves into this hot spring where Yuna is living. And she's and a hot grill. She's a hot grill, hot grill ghost. Oh, and he doesn't want to punch her. He doesn't her want because, to punch a hot grill. Yeah. Because she's like, she's very nice and friendly and, you know, he feels like she has, you know, something to Does learn. she have big boobs? And she has huge boobs. So. Okay, so that's why he doesn't want to punch her. Exactly. He's and like, I don't want to punch this. Yeah, he sees her naked in like the yeah. first like five yeah, minutes. Oh, oh, so. Yeah, he's in love. Oh, for sure, dude. For sure. It's super etchy. Yeah. That's another one where like they just completely censor and it's just like, oh, there's just like, you know. So this is convenient like convenient clouds there. Rom-com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so. There, there hasn't there hasn't been a good rom-com in it's, a while. It's going to be like when you're typical rom-com harem anime, I think. That's what I feel. They like <clears throat> honestly like I haven't seen a good rom-com in a while. So hopefully this I don't know, we'll is see. better. We'll Maybe. see. We'll cover it next week. I won't, but you won't. <laughs> Maybe it's just me next week. <laughs> Maybe it's just you. Maybe it's just me. You're sitting down on one of these couches, I'll sit, sipping I'll sit on some here. whiskey, with a fireplace in the back. I'll pretend like there are other people here. I'll just talk to myself. <laughs> you're like, nah. hey, so what did you think about this? And then I'll switch chairs and be like, hey, so like I actually think that this. Now you have to do that. No. Yeah. yeah. That's not going to happen. <laughs> it's so much work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny like, though. It's funny. For like five minutes. Yeah, you get so tired. And then you'd be like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> you should just, yeah, just have like a glass of whiskey and just talk yeah. about. I'll put on the velvet robe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cashmere slippers. Yeah. 
we'll have the fluffy cat to yeah pet, but yeah. it'll just be a stuffed animal. Yeah, very uh, Jeff Kaplan style. Yeah, with the Yule yeah. log in the back. Maybe I'll have a rolling hamster in a ball that destroys <laughs> everything, it just breaks everything. Yeah. In the back. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I mean, is there, there is there any other any other ones that you were wanted to talk about? That's about it. Uh, I think that's all I've seen. Yeah. What about you? That is it, definitely. I think Chio's School Road is the other one that I've uh, I've been watching. Okay. It's uh, it's enjoyable. So. Cool. Um, My Hero Academia. Maybe we'll have to take a little break. Um, they just started up again. They had a one week break. Um, and then the episode yesterday was was a little it was, it was all right. We'll see where it goes from there. So all right. okay. give it, I think we give it a give it a few weeks. When I come back, we'll talk more about it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So um Yeah. Oh, you know what uh you know what else? They came out with a new preview for Goblin Slayer. Oh, that's something that we talked about last week. Yeah, that I'm not sure how that's gonna it it looks cool, man. It looks pretty not lit. sure how they're gonna show that. Yeah, I don't know. That's what's in gonna fall, happen. right? It's in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh there's some graphic shit in there. So. I told you, man. And I told it like, I don't know if they're going to portray it. They're, they have to censor it for sure. Uh, it's very heavy stuff, but it's a good series. It's it's so cool. Yeah. It's like a it's like one of those badass like feelings that you get when you watch uh, Attack on Titan. Yeah. For like the first time. I, and you're like, this is so sick. Like I want to I read more of it. Yeah. It's cool, man. Because like. Even though the first two chapters, I was like, what just <laughs> happened? Yeah. But like, it's that kind of feeling where you're like, but like, I'm kind of like, you know, interested in to see what's going on, even though it seems like it's going to turn into you know, like something like gate where there's just like a bunch of these like girls that are like into the main guy and he's just mm. kind of like, mm. whatever. Mm-hmm. But it just seems more like this, like gruesome it's a pretty it's a pretty heavy series but it's yeah. like definitely a very adult series um but it's cool yeah they had a new preview that premiered or that they released uh and it looks good so i think i tweet or i think i retweeted that so that's on our twitter cool look out for it yeah so um i think that's it yeah i think that's it for us today well uh thanks for joining us i mean this is fun having some video um, and then maybe we'll see you guys again next week. Might be a break. I'm not sure. Hopefully we, we have at least, uh, some audio recording for you guys, but the video has been fun, hopefully. Um, uh, but the video has been fun. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, uh, anime on draft podcast, Twitter at anime on draft. Um, our WordPress is anime on And, uh, of course you can listen to us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Just search Anime on Draft. Do it. So, yeah, that was it. Good week. See you next time. Bye.